kind invitation. I, I accepted it with pleasure. I very much like uh, talking to young people, especially, and being myself more or less with the same generation, I believe that it is easier to communicate and messages. And therefore, I am grateful for the invitation. I, I believe that internet communication gets more and more important in today's world. And uh, not that enough people understand that. And to a certain extent, as you know, social media has been responsible for the wave of democratization we find the, these days in Northern Africa, the Middle East. But in principle, I believe that uh, internet media will get more and more important in, in, doing, bus in doing business, in doing politics, in doing economy and everything. And uh, basically, when you find that some countries are even organizing by uh, using modern technologies, elections or uh, census these days, then you realize how important it really is and how important it will get in time to come. So I think it would be a huge mistake if one tends to ignore the importance of, of internet and social networking. And just as a follow-up um, comment, you, you, it's, I'm gonna quote you here in, in one of your blog postings where you say, about the internet, you say it will allow people to bolt over the trenches of bureaucracy and it will reduce the distance between citizens and decision makers. And the first thing that came to my mind was um, this is exactly the problem that we have with the European Union. And do you think that uh, social media has the power to, to solve exactly that problem of bridging the gap between European citizens and, and, its, Europe and its institutions? which are very often um, perceived as, as overly bureaucratic. I don't think that social media and, and social networking could uh, supersede institutions of the democratic system, or liberal democratic system. But what social networking could help with is bridging that uh, lack of communication and uh, the contact between a uh, politician who <coughs> has its electorate, who has its constituency, with, and, and his contact communication with those people. Because you obviously don't have enough time to be there uh, every day, to talk to them every day. But it is important if you have such a lively, such a vivid, vivid communication through internet. That's the advantage, basically. Just imagine a European Parliament who has to uh, attend the seatings of the European Parliament in Brussels or Strasbourg, and it takes a very long time for him to be away from the home. And uh, internet gets, uh, and, and internet provides you with an excellent opportunity to be in contact with your constituency, basically, constantly. Mm -hmm. And now on to you, Montenegro relations. Um, Montenegro is considered probably one of the best in class in terms of its progress towards accession. You have obtained a candidate status uh, in December. Uh, and and you've, uh, in your last visit to Brussels, uh, Herman van Rompuy, the president of the EU, has praised the progress of the country. At the same time, however, the, the enlargement process seems to be a little bit sluggish and there seems to be very little political willingness to, to enlarge further at this stage. How do you think this will impact um, Montenegro's accession uh, prospects? And also, how do you communicate to your electorate this uh, reluctance from the EU when they probably have very high expectations and, and in terms of European aspirations? Well, the, I mean, uh, I've had a lot of contacts, numerous meetings, and even today I met uh, Commissioner Fule, who is the Enlargement Commissioner. And what he uh, constantly raises as his position is that there is no enlargement fatigue in Europe. Uh, what we have is that countries who are aspirant, aspirant countries to become members of the EU need to reach uh, uh, higher standards than it might, be, might have been the case decades ago. And it's perfectly okay with me. I, I believe that through the process of uh, drills, uh, we will actually uh, 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 do many things which later on, once we are members of the EU, would not impede our uh, participation to the integration process. And that's how I find it very, very useful. Of course, it is <coughs> difficult for a country to uh, go through uh, the whole process because it is quite a challenging one. And as you said, back in December, uh, 
Montenegro was granted candidate status country. And altogether last year was very successful for us. Uh, after many years, uh, our citizens got the opportunity to travel without visa throughout Europe. And that's a, that's a funny thing, especially for young people who want to travel around Europe, who want to meet new people, who want to uh, uh, understand the way of living in other countries. Regardless of the fact that you can enjoy that knowledge through internet, personal touch and personal contact cannot be substituted for. The other thing is that Stabilization Association Agreement uh, became effective on the 1st of May last year. So we have contract between European Union and Montenegro in place and effective. That's very important. And thirdly, uh, in December, we closed the year with uh, getting candidate status country. Of course, the European Commission uh, recommended that after fulfilling some, uh, some homework, some, uh, after, after receiving adequate response by Montenegro administration towards seven criteria, they will be ready to give us green light for negotiations. And that's exactly the stage we are in right now. We're not trying to uh, do the best we can in various fields, such as electoral law, such as electoral law, such as uh, media freedom uh, and civil sector cooperation, um, uh, anti-discrimination implementation, anti-discrimination laws. Also, we are trying to resolve the issue of the internal displaced people. There is a fight against corruption, organized crime. So, through that sort of a drill, we will get readier to to uh, move into the integration in, in, in the final stage of negotiations. And I believe that uh, the whole process will, will uh, eventually be a successful one. So uh, though some people perceive that there is some sort, some sort of enlargement fatigue, I'm absolutely sure that uh, people in Brussels and other member states realize that European Union integration process cannot be finished unless Western Balkans is in. Okay. Well, I, it was a pleasure to have a meeting with the Prime Minister. We talked about what Montenegro is doing to advance its course towards European institutions, its membership action plan in NATO, uh, its aspiration to join the European Union, and domestically the progress it's making on important issues like uh, rule of law and anti-corruption. Uh, the United States strongly supports Montenegro in all of these ambitions, and we're very encouraged by what the Prime Minister had to say.